Hey, I'm JR, I'm the training manager here at Crutchfield, and today we're gonna to show you how to install a backup camera. We're in the install bay with a whole bunch of new advisors, and uh, we're all installing stuff into their cars so they can get some hands-on experience uh, with all of our products. And in, the, in Barry's Xterra here, Barry and Jesse are up front installing a Clarion stereo with a nice big screen on it. Uh, and we're gonna install a backup camera on the back of Barry's Xterra. It's gonna go right here where the license plate is. Uh, it's gonna be mounted in this nice license plate frame. Uh, the camera, the cable from the camera will go through the hole and it will come up in another hole right about there. Uh, and that's where the camera's wire will connect to the wire that we need to run to the front of the vehicle. So that connects to the camera. The other end of this cable has three connections on it. The red wire will simply connect to our accessory power wire, the same wire that powers the radio. The black wire will connect to chassis ground. And the uh, yellow RCA cable will connect to the backup camera input on the back of the radio. Uh, and we're just going to run these wires underneath these panels here down next to the back seat, underneath the door sills, right up to the driver's kick panel, up into the dash, and right out into the radio cavity. Uh, and we'll go take a look at uh, how that's gonna look up here up front. So as you can see, Barry and Jesse pretty much have this Clarion stereo installed in the dash. And as part of that installation, they ran two wires, the parking brake wire and the reverse wire, through the dash and right down to this vehicle harness down here, uh, where we're gonna connect those wires. And connecting the reverse wire allows the radio to know when Barry puts his Xterra in reverse. Uh, and then he can look at his radio and see the image coming from the camera and stop running over kids' bikes. He, apparently he doesn't like kids' bikes, and so. Yeah, so let's go get started. We're gonna start by dropping the spare tire back here so that when we drill our hole through the rear bumper, uh, we don't drill into the tire. And uh, also that reveals the hole that we're gonna run the cable up through and into the storage compartment back here. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is drill a hole in the bumper for the camera wire to go through. Uh, and so we're gonna take the, uh, the frame and we're gonna put it in place and mark a spot here. That should be about right. And uh, we don't need to drill a huge hole. Uh, this is the cable we're going to run through there and up into the passenger compartment here, the storage compartment. And they, uh, they designed the camera in a way so that you don't have that whole huge bundle of wire going all the way to the front of the car. Uh, and you only need to drill a hole big enough to get this connector through it. So. That drill bit should be plenty big enough. There we go, nice clean hole. Make sure it lines up. Oh yeah, perfect, dead center. So we're gonna run the camera wire through this hole. Uh, we are also going to run this wire that comes with the license plate frame. So the license plate frame has some lights in it so that we can uh, see our license plate. And this is in addition to the factory license plate bulbs and there's no problem with that. Uh, in fact, we're gonna use the wires that uh, power these bulbs. We're gonna tap into those to power the bulbs in our license plate frame. So everything, all of that can be wired up right here behind the bumper. These wires are pretty easily accessible underneath here. So you know, let me go ahead and run these wires through. So here's a good example of do as we say, not as we do. You should use a rubber grommet to protect the wire from the sharp edges of the metal. There we go. All right, so I've got the Clarion camera mounted to the Clarion license plate frame using the brackets provided both with the frame and with the camera. That's what's all here. We've got our wires routed through it and through our hole in the bumper. Um, so we're going to go ahead and mount this to the bumper. All 
All right, so that's mounted good and tight. And our camera here is adjustable, so we can get just the right angle. So Barry can use this either to see a wide field of view, field of view up high, uh, or if he wants to aim it right down here at his trailer hitch for when he's backing up to his trailer. Uh, it's going to serve both purposes. Depends, might even have a wide enough angle to see all of that all at once. So uh, next we're going to go under the uh, bumper here and we're going to connect power and ground to the license plate lights to get this uh, license plate frame to light up. All right, so we've got 12 volt and ground. We need to connect those. Uh, I've used a multimeter on these uh, wires here to determine that this is our 12 volts and this is our ground for this light. And I'm going to use these posi taps to tap into these wires so we don't have to cut them. And this is much easier just to use these posies. I'll go ahead and tap into the positive wire. Give us 12 volts. And we'll do the same thing on the ground wire. And let's see, we've got a little excess wire here. I'm going to wrap that up and secure it with a zip tie. All right, so we've got the wire coming from the license plate frame here, zip tied to the flex loom. We've got it connected to power and ground. I'm going to go ahead and secure that back into place. All right, so now we're going to check to see if uh, we've made our connections correctly and these lights come on. Uh, hey, Barry, can you turn your uh, running lights on for me? Oh, yeah, we're getting light out of the bulbs in the license plate frame bracket along with the original bulb, so we're good to go there. Now we can start uh, the process of running the camera wire up through the hole in the uh, storage compartment. So. Uh, I got a bit of a mess up here, so let me clean up my tools and stuff because uh, we're going to have to lift this panel and get in here and get that cable up. All right, so now we need to get the camera cable from behind the bumper up through a hole in the body uh, and into the passenger compartment here. Uh, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to remove all these panels. I've already done this a little bit so I can see what's going on here, so I'll show you. Uh, this first panel just comes right out. Next, this panel does indeed just pry out like that. And the next panel here as well. Uh, and uh, this reveals a very nice big hole right here that we'll be able to run that wire right up through. And to do that, I'm going to need a wire worm. Thank you very much. Stick that down. We'll connect our wire to it. And just fish it right on through, just like that. And of course, before we're done, I'll get under there and make sure that that cable is not interfering with the spare tire or anything else underneath there. And uh, we can go ahead and start running our cable uh, up towards the front of the vehicle. And the next place we're going to go is this panel right here. Well, I've already there's three screws in it. I've already unscrewed those for us, so we should be able to just pop this out like that. And we'll be able to run this wire across up here to right next to the back seat. And it's going to go down to the driver's side back door uh, where we're going to just run it under the door sills to the front of the vehicle. All right, so these uh, two wires, I've got the other wire in the front coming back. So now I can mate the wire that comes from the camera to the wire that goes up to the uh, back of the stereo. There we go. Those wires are nice and tight. We can now tuck these underneath these trim panels. Got a lot of cable to run up to the dash. Right along this door sill underneath the weather stripping. All right, so we've got the cable to the kick panel, and we're going to go up above the pedals. Make sure we uh, zip tie it up in place there so we're not interfering with Barry's feet as he operates the uh, controls of the vehicle. I'll do that, but I also need to get this cable run up into the cavity of the radio, where, as you can see, Barry and Jesse have left it kind of half installed for me so that I can get these cables run up into the dash there. So. All right, now we should be able to pull it right back up through this hole here. Beautiful. 
you're going to want to take all of this excess cable and wrap it up nice and neatly, maybe tie it up with a zip tie and tuck it somewhere behind the radio. You can probably find some nook or cranny inside the dash where we can stick the excess cable. It looks like we have a perfect place right next to this air vent here. And I've got just enough cable left to route it over here and get it all connected to the back of the stereo. So let's do our power wire first. I'm just gonna undo this posi connector. And so that's one of the awesome things about posi connectors is that you can just unscrew them and add a wire in and connect it with some new wires. All right, there's the power wire for the camera. We're gonna twist it together with these power wires for the radio. This is the uh, switched power wire, which means they are only powering the radio when the vehicle is on or when the key is in the accessory position because you wouldn't want your radio and your camera on all the time, otherwise you're gonna kill your battery. Um, next, it's time to do the ground wire, uh, which is the black wire. And uh, in some vehicles, the black wire is a wire in the harness. Uh, so you would connect it the same way I just did the red wire. Uh, in this particular vehicle, the uh, radio is grounded straight to a piece of metal in the vehicle, right here, in fact. And so that makes it easy enough to just loosen that screw and add that terminal right to it. So it's a pretty simple grounding process. Now the radio and the camera get their power from here. They're ground from here. Uh, the next thing to do is uh, connect the video feed from the camera to the rear view camera input on the back of the stereo. Sometimes it's a, it's a yellow RCA connection right on the back of the chassis and other times, like with this Clarion, there's a plug that uh, you plug into the back of the radio and it's got all sorts of connectors. These are audio and video inputs and outputs. The feed from the camera goes into the backup camera input hanging off of this harness here. So we'll just plug those together. And then this connects into a connection right here. There we go. So the next thing we'll need to do, and almost the last thing we'll need to do, is get a couple wires from this radio connected to the vehicle. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's a, this is a video head unit. We have a backup camera. So there's a couple additional wires in addition to your power and ground and speakers and such. Uh, and that would be our parking brake wire and our reverse wire. Uh, and in different vehicles, those are located in different places. They might be right next to the handbrake or down by the foot brake or any number of places in between in the dash somewhere. In this car, they're down here in the driver's side kick panel. Uh, and so we have routed the two wires from the back of the radio through the dash down here. We're going to get down and we're going to just simply use those posi taps to tap into those wires. I think that pretty much covers the specifics of installing the backup camera. I'm going to go ahead and get Barry and Jesse. Uh, to finish installing the stereo, putting these panels back together, putting the radio back in. Of course, we'll test everything to make sure it all works, and we'll take a look and see how great this backup camera looks. So I thought it might be nice if we took a look at what it would take to install a backup camera in a completely different type of, type of car. Barry's is a, an SUV with the license plate under the bumper, so pretty straightforward there. But what about on a four-door sedan like this where the license plate would go on the trunk lid? You would take the license plate off and you would probably drill a hole. You might find a channel or you might find a, uh, a access point into the, hood, into the trunk from uh, maybe where the license plate lights are or something like that. You might find a place to run the wire through. If not, drill a hole right here. Uh, that'll get your wire into the underside of the trunk. Uh, there's, again, there might be some access points. You can pull your cable through. If there's a liner like this, you're gonna, just gonna route it underneath the liner right over here to the, uh, to the hinge. And then you're gonna come in the trunk. And then it's basically the same from there. You just need to get your wires from the trunk all the way up to behind the radio and the rest of the installation is the same thing we did in Barry's car. So that's how to install a backup camera. I hope this demystifies the process a little bit for you. It's not as difficult as you might think it is. It does involve running some wires and maybe drilling a hole or two, but it's not rocket science. Uh, it's just some wires from the back of the vehicle to the front. Uh, and once you get it in, uh, you're gonna love your backup camera because you can, like Barry, stop running over kids' bikes. If you have any questions or need some help picking out or getting a backup camera, just call Crutchfield.